Hello, this is Chris Beasley once more with part, ser part four of a series of videos related to the sequence wizard. What I want to show you today is how to use a loop based on charging and discharging of an energy device. Now lots of times when you're charging or discharging a device such as a battery, uh, you would like to do EIS in the middle of a charge or a discharge. And so I'm going to show you how to do that today. I encourage you to look at the previous three videos uh, relating to the sequence wizard before delving into this one because I'm not going to explain the basics. What I've done here with my sequence is that I've taken a loop based on a charge discharge out of the Power 800 uh, directory and then I've dropped in some charge and discharge and some galvanostatic EAS into our loop. And so when I double click on charge discharge the charge discharge loop. In here I can find a number of cycles that I wish to. I can also input the capacity of the device if known. And then I can define two different loop end, loop ends. Uh, what these loop ends are, are these will terminate the entire charge discharge test, not just an individual charge or discharge step. And so I don't have to put input anything here, but I can if the discharge time becomes less than some limit, or the charge time becomes greater than some limit, or the capacity has dropped by some limit. Finally, I can have the option to save uh, raw data here by checking the checkbox. If that's check, checked on, it's going to save all the raw data for each individual step. If I input a skip number, uh, it's going to save uh, every nth uh, step. So in this instance, if I input skip number of zero, it should save every data file, every individual step. And so I define a charge here, and so perhaps we're charging uh, a lithium ion battery and we're charging from uh, 3 to 4.3 volts. So I could choose half cell, full cell, or stack. In this example, it might be a, a, a coin cell. Working connection could be positive or negative, depending on, upon your configuration. And I define some charging current and a maximum charging time. We define our sample period, and then we have two stop-at tests. We need to input at least one of these, uh, or we will simply end up stopping the charge based on the maximum charge time. So in this instance, I'm going to charge from uh, whatever my initial voltage is to 3.5. Once that 3.5 is exceeded, the voltage th uh, limit is exceeded, we'll stop and we'll run an EIS. I'm going to uncheck voltage finish in this instance because we're not at the final voltage. You can define a second stop at test if you want to. Uh, if you're monitoring temperature and the temperature exceeds a limit or the rate of change of temperature exceeds some limit, uh, you can define those. Typically though, you might just simply say none. Okay, so that's charging. Uh, from initial value to 3.5. Then we're going to run a galvanostatic EIS from whatever our initial frequency might be, say 1000 uh, hertz down to, to whatever value we want. We we'll click OK. And now for our second part of the charge, uh, again we, we double click on that, and now we're going to stop at when the voltage exceeds 4.2 volts or 4.3, whatever your ending voltage might be. And now if you have a lithium ion battery and you want to add a voltage finish, you can input that here. You check the box and you input what you want your... Once the current drops below this value or exceeds this time, then the next step will proceed. So we can run an EIS on a fully charged uh, battery. And then finally we can start discharging. And so perhaps we want to discharge to a particular state, run EIS, and then discharge all the way uh, and start the whole cycle over again. So we're discharging at some, you can choose different uh, discharge modes here based on constant current, constant load, and constant power. And now we can choose our limit. So I'm going to choose, once our voltage drops below 3.5, I want to stop the discharge and obtain an EIS spectrum. Next, once the EIS spectrum is obtained, then we can continue our discharge. And now when the voltage drops below 
3 volts, we're going to start to cycle over again. And so that's how you would set up a charge discharge with impedance uh, in a uh, mixed charge state.